Hallelujah. Let us have a seat before God. Can we send messages to all people that we are live on Facebook? Um, don't actually know what went wrong with um, the laptop. The, the, the visual is nice, but the audio we can't hear. And to do that, we have to shut it down and start again. I pray that God Almighty will continue to be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, we shouldn't worry. We're going to grow to a level whereby we have technical teams that can do all that and people that can observe all that. And But for now, we have to make do with what we have. Amen. I pray that God will bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, have you sent to everybody? Hallelujah. 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 Today we are going to talk about God's everlasting love. God's everlasting love. Amidst all of this, at a time when even most of the things that we as humans depend on is not working, there's only one person we can run to, and that person is God. Is that not true? true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is sending his word to us today that he loves us. And I pray that God will grant us understanding in Jesus' mighty Amen. name. That was the reason why we sang that song. Bigger than all my problems. Bigger than everything. God is bigger than every mountain we can or cannot see. And because God is bigger than all, he will show his greatness in our life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if we look at the word of God that was sent to us, the book of Jonah chapter 1. I want us to look at that word very well. I'm going to read verse 1 through to verse number 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah, that's verse 3, ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa when he found a ship bound for the port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for touches to flee from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is something that I know about our God. Is that when God's word comes to you, it's coming with a purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This word of God that came to Jonah wasn't a suggestion. I want you to look at that. God is, God is not suggesting to Jonah to go to the Navy. God was actually commanding Jonah to go to the Navy. And the purpose why God wants to do this is because he said in verse number 1 and 2 that Nineveh's wickedness has come up to him. That it can, it can fuel their wickedness. Their wickedness is getting to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is speaking to Jonah because he loves Nineveh. Even with their wickedness. He would appreciate if Nineveh could have a turnaround. But what did Jonah do? Jonah, instead of listening to God, following God's commandment, felt he would flee from God. Now, I want you to understand this. Jonah knew that nobody can run away from God. But his instinct is this, which I believe through the reading of the text, is that if he can get as far away from the place he is, in an opposite direction from Nineveh, God will actually talk to somebody else and use the other, the person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do that in Celestia. You have some prophet that God will speak to. God will say, okay, go ahead and do this. And they'll say they transfer the message to another prophet. They said the message is not for me, so I have to shift it to another person. 
No, that message is not for me. I have to shift it to another person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It happens in our church. But the things that I found out is this. When Jonah thought he's doing himself some good, he's actually helping God to use him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because what happens? Which is one of the things that happened to the world that we need right now. Once you try to get away from God, you are going down. You will never go down in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because it is written concerning Jonah that when he left for Tarshish, after that, he went down to Joppa. He went down to the ship. He went down to the bottom of the ship, if you read it. And he went into the sea at the end of the lesson. He was thrown into the sea. And then he thought he's going to die and even a God had to send a fish to even catch him. So he went down into the belly of the fish. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want us to look at something. Verse number three. Jonah paid for his own fare. He went down to the port, paid for his fare, and was able to get on that ship and was on his way, away from God. Many of us think when we do something and that things become possible, you know something is bad, but when you do it and nothing is happening, you think you're getting away with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, that's our thinking. When we do something, maybe we do somebody harm, we do somebody evil, and then we were able to get away with it. We think God is not going to do anything. God is a just God. God is a great God. God has forgiven me. But that wasn't the case of Jonah. If God needs you for something, He will use you for that thing. Either you like it or you don't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that. That's why I'm trying to make us understand the things in regards to this word of God. Now, if we look at why was Jonah actually running? Why is Jonah running away from this purpose? There is one conclusion I can find out because if you read the whole of the book of Jonah, I think it's like four or five chapters, it's not a lot. You find that Jonah knew that if he goes to the Navy and ministers to these people and they change and they become, if they can repent of the sin and then turn to God, he knew that God will forgive them. But these are wicked people. So, with Jonah, he would rather have them perish than to have God forgive them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for you to confirm, if you look at Jonah 4, 2, you'll find it there. He said, I already know you, God. That you are God, you are a compassionate God. I know you would look away. And that was why I didn't even want to go in the first place. Because once Jonah ministered to these people, they were able to change. How about myself and you? God Almighty has given us the power to change other people. The grace to minister to people. The grace to make sure people get converted to Christ. But has any of us done that lately? Have any of us ministered to anyone, even at our place of work, about the Lord Jesus, about our faith? Many of us would rather want, want some people that are going and change to, to, so something to just happen to them, so that they will know they are sinning. Hallelujah. I pray that God will be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to tell you something. This is what's happening to the church. If we look at the world right now, Satan knew that if the church could stay the way they were of old, whereby what the church was doing of old is, when you have a church, after the church service, the five times within the week, they go out, they minister to people, they convert souls to God. But these days, it's not the same thing. Church is about entertainment. Church is about how big I am. Church is about how good I can say things. Church is about prophecy. Church is about, it's just about that. And now we have kicked Christ to the core, just like Jonah. And what is Satan doing? Satan is doing all this so that those that are in the church will feel so comfortable with sin without even expressing Christ so that many can go to hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That will not be our case in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what's happening in the church. 
Many of us now, when we go to church, we are not going to church because we are going to hear the word of God, the vibrant word of God. We are going to church because, okay, maybe I'm going to go see my friend. Maybe I have a project. Maybe I, I want the shepherd to pray for me. I want this work to be done. I want to see a prophet. If that prophet can just begin to speak in tongues upon my life, things will begin to change. That is the purpose why we go to church. The church has lost its purpose. We are like Jonah. And it is because Satan doesn't want others to get converted. Now, what is the purpose of you being a Christian if you cannot convert others to become like you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what did God think? Because when Jonah thought he was running away from the work of God, he was busy relaxing, going down and going down and going down. He felt so much down to the level that he fell asleep. Many of we that call ourselves Christians right now are sleeping. Spiritually, many are sleeping. Physically, even some are sleeping. Right now, some of the people that are online trying to watch this, so some of them are sleeping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the truth. The church are falling so much asleep. That's why God had to look into the grace that he has for Nineveh. The grace that he has for those people, even as bad as they were. Because when I was reading about those people, what they do is they kill us at ease. They, when they punish people, they can dig the ground, put them in the ground, and then run, run their horse over them, and then cut their neck after everything. So, Jonah felt these people, they, they are worthy of dying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will not die in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, at the point when everything has gone wrong, for the people of Jonah, for the people of Nineveh, so to say, God has to make changes in the life of Jonah so that he will be able to fulfill his purpose. And what did God do? God sent, if you look at verse 4, God now sent a white wing on the sea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you see that? Amen. Amen. So God now sent a storm to disturb the peace of Jonah. Jonah that thought he was running away from God. And by the time I'm like 500 miles away, God should be able to touch somebody else. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to go over there and claim and tell them God is destroying you very, very soon. And then they repent and then it, my word doesn't come to pass. Many of us are like that. So God sent a storm, and this storm was so big that the people on board could tell that something is actually wrong. The sailors, the captains, people that know what they're doing could tell that this is not a thing of mind. This is actually from God. And while they were looking around, they found Jonah there, sleeping, snoring. And they had to wake him up. <laughs> Why are you sleeping? Don't you understand that things is not going right? And Jonah knew that it was the cause of the problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What was the suggestion? Throw me into the sea. If you throw me into the sea, everything will be fine. Many people would rather die than to help others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many people will say, ah, for me to help him over my dead body, for me to have mercy on him over my dead body. Many people have seen them, many people say that. I pray that God be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let us look at our time now, right now, in this world that we are. Because the church has failed. Because the church has failed in many aspects. When I talk about the church, many people think the building is the building is not the church. The church is we God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got comfortable with the building. We got comfortable with the music. We got comfortable with the entertainment. We got comfortable with so many things. Miracles. All these lies. Because even Satan himself can do miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God began to send things to one the world. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and landslides, and all that. But later, all these things became enough to us. We hear volcanoes happening somewhere, they always normal. 
You had earthquake, it's not more, you know, we never even thought it's a warning from God anymore. The divorce rate is going so high, we thought, oh, it's become a thing of normal. Murder rates going on, we thought it's normal. Taking the name of God away from schools, away from prison, is not a norm thing. Gender thing becomes a norm. That even you can't even tell which one is a male, which one is a female. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I was wondering within myself that when they were announcing the people that were touched by all this, why can they talk about all those other sexes? Why is it only a male and a female? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because they knew that wasn't of God. So God has to bring the situation that we're in right now so that the church in itself can be unboxed. So that everybody can be awakened in our homes. Amen. Everybody can be awakened with our children, with our wives. And then we can see the purpose of God for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to wake up. Because this is happening because God loves us. I'm going to tell you something. This Kobe or whatever the name is, has proved to us all that we are living in a temporary world. Everything around us is temporary. And why do I say that? Many that has cars, that has billions, can't even heal themselves of this disease. Amen. They are, everyone that even does not know how to call the name of God is actually calling the name of God right now. So that is to tell us that those things that we put our faith on, those things that we rely on, those things that we thought were short with our security are temporary. Because even with the gate man that you are, with all those 10 securities that surround you, once you catch this virus, those 10 securities will run away from you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even your money cannot even help you. The rich are crying. The poor also are crying. It is to tell us that everything that we believe in is temporary. The husband, the wife, the children, the car, the houses, the whatever thing. Whether it's a position that you're looking into, how to run over people, how to change people's lives, how to destroy people. All these things are temporary. But God's love is eternal. Amen. That was what God did to Jonah. This is to remind us that we have something that we, we're not doing. I pray that God will be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to look at the word of God. Right now, let us open to the um, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. Because if we look at this storm, God used this storm to shut down every idol that has derailed the church. Every idol that has derailed us. Sports, money, jobs, prophet, pastor, church, even the building itself, the movement. Every vanity of life is gone. Family values is now hope. 2 Corinthians 5 10. If anybody says it, you can read. Yes. Ten. Yes. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We, all of us, will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone yes may receive the things done in his body. That everyone, remember that word, may receive the things done. What is in this body? According to that have done according to what he has done whether it be good whether it be good or bad or bad hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, sit down for a moment god has given us the great message as a church to give out to the whole world and that message is in the book of matthew chapter 28 18 to 20 where christ tells us to go out and minister to the whole world Make disciples of all nations. Did you find it? Are we there yet? Yes, then Jesus came to them and said, All authorities in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of age hallelujah, hallelujah. and what is happening now is to tell us that God is with us he's calling us back he's calling the church back 
Your purpose is to convert the world. Your purpose is not to say, God, that man is ISIS, I cannot preach to him. That man is this, I cannot preach to him. That man is a killer, I cannot talk to him. Your purpose is not to discriminate. Your so purpose is not to become spiritually racist, a spiritual racist in a way. You are supposed to go out and minister to all nations. We are supposed, this is what every Christian is supposed to do. We are supposed to evangelize and then train. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are supposed to go out there, evangelize to people, convert them, and then train them on how to convert other souls. But what we do now is we bring people to the church and we don't even teach them on how to minister to people. We just want to teach them how to make money, how to do this, how to do that, how to just live this life, live that life, and then we forget almost everything that has to do with heaven and Christ. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we need to prepare ourselves because God wants repentance. Many the, the, the country that or the city that Jonah was running away from got converted. So which means the old world still has time. We Christians can still add more to the body of Christ. I pray that after all this is done, that God Almighty will give us the grace to go out there and make disciples for God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us go to the second Bible reading. Matthew 12. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than everything, God is bigger than every mountain, I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my troubles, bigger than everything, God is bigger than every mountain, I can or cannot see. Are we there? The book of Matthew chapter 12. Let us read from verse 38. Mama, can you read it from verse 38? Then some of the Pharisees and the teachers of the Lord said to him, mm -hmm. Teacher. Teacher. We want to see a sign from you. We want to see a sign from you. Hold on. Many believers that are true believers, that believe so much in the word of God, that are actually sticking to God. Many of them before now has been praying God, give us a sign to know when you're here, to know when you're coming, to know all that. But many people don't know when you're asking for sign, you don't even know what you're asking about. Because when God begins to show you some sign, sometimes we can't even stand it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the sign is here to tell us that Christ is close. That the, coming, that the coming of the Son of God is very, very close. And the thing that people don't understand is, for God to make those believers, the believers that have been swayed, the believers that have gone into sleeping, the believers that, the believers that are spiritually dead, for God to wake them up, God will always use the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is what's happening now. And God is saying here, that the part that I love here, verse, I think, verse 41. He said, can you read it? The men of Nineveh will stand up at judgment. The men of Nineveh will stand up in judgment at the judgment with the generation and condemning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what God is saying there is, look at the, the time that we're in right now. Do you think if the men of Nineveh, Nineveh are given the chance to speak about the word that we hear right now, do you, don't you think they, they will tell us, ah, ah, this is more worse than what they did? That's what God is saying. Those, even they said the queen that came from the south, the queen of the south, even with are coming into the life of Solomon, and checking him from God to the other way would even condemn this word and ah, ah, this word is more terrible than what she knows but God is saying that this will pass that's why he's talking about Jonah right now we are kind of in the belly of the fish for like three days spiritually so this is the time that we need to seek the face of God we need to go on to God we need to start raising up the family altars we need to start praising God. We need to start talking to people about God. We need to start confessing our faith. 
not just when we come to church, not just acting when we come to church and acting as if, as if we are holier than everybody. That is not what God is saying. We have to come to be converted both spiritually and physically. We have to begin to reflect our faith outside and inside. Many of us will, will lie and when we go outside and we start lying, and then they say, ah, you know your lie said, oh, it's a white lie. What's a white lie? A lie is a lie. Whether it's white, whether it's black, it's white, it's lie. Hallelujah. What are we to do after this? Because this will pass. Every problem has its expiring date. Every catastrophe has its end. And this will end with, our, with God being glorified in our life in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the thing that God is saying, verse 43, can somebody read it? 43, Mama. When an impure spirit comes out of a person. Yes. It goes through a raid places. Yes. Seeking rest and does not find it. Yes. Then it says, Yes. I will return to the house I left. Yes. When I arrive. Yes. When it arrives, mm -hmm. it finds the house un un unoccupied. Yes. Swept yes. clean and yes. put in order. Mm -hmm. Then it goes and it takes with with several other spirits. Yes. More wicked than itself. Mm -hmm. And they go in and live there. Yes. And with the final condition of the person is worse Good. than the first, that is how it will be given with this wicked generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. What Christ is telling us there, Sidama, is this. Many have begun so well with Christ. Many started so well with Christ. Many believed God. Many, when they started with the church, they were, when they said bow their heads, I know people when I was growing up and they came into the church, when they said bow their head three times, they bind down as many as they can. When they just stand up, sit there, they will sit, they will not move around. But once their problem is solved, they become even bring God and God. And once they start going into that act, God Almighty, those things that have gotten away from them, now start coming back into their life. Is it pride? Is it fornication, adultery, all those things that they say, God, I don't want again. But because they have now become a man of themselves, not a man in God. You know, some people say a man of God. You can be a man of God and not be a man in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because man of God is just a name. When you're a man in God, God knows you are in him. So I pray that God Almighty will grant us the grace to stay in him in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So after all this, after all this repentance that everyone is going through, after all this confession that people are going through, after all this, Lord, save me, Lord, save me. If you can just save me and my family, we'll forever praise you. If you can just save me and my children, we'll forever decide in you. If you can just save me and my wife, ah, forever I will become yours. When all this is over, are you going to go back to your old self or are you going to reside in God just as you promised? The lesson of today is simple. Man's disobedience is imminent. God's love is imminent, but salvation is only of God, cannot be determined by anybody. I pray that God will save us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So this is what I'm going to conclude with. Let us realize that we have God's word given to us. Let us all realize, whether you are in your home right now listening to me or the few of us that are here, realize that you have God's word that he has spoken to you. What is that word? That's the word that we read in the book of Matthew 28, 18 to 20. But the confirmation is in the book of 2 Timothy, which we have. 2 Timothy 2.15. Somebody, please. 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. Yes. Study to, to show thyself approved unto God. Study. Every one of us, instead of just sitting at home, Everyone, some people have finished all the movies on Netflix, some people have finished all the movies on YouTube, some people have finished all the novels and life. Most, some people have not even touched the Bible unless if they get scared. But what of God is saying, while you are going through this, study to show yourself approved. Uh -huh. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Some of us are ashamed. When we are going somewhere, for them to know I'm a Christian, no, I, no, I have to act like they are, they can behave like a Roman. So when you're in the club, you, you, you're naked. When you're in the church, you are clothed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And many are like that. 
You are with some people use F word, S word, M word, G word, whatever word that you can use. But when you come to the church, you are just, oh, holy, 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 holy. But the word of God is saying, study to show yourself approved. You don't have to have become A one in one place and become B in another place. Uh huh. Dividing the word of truth. Uh huh. But shun profane and vain babbling. You see, shun profane and vain babbling, which many of us are doing now. God, with all the things that have done to you, I can't believe I'm going through this because of this I've done to you. What have you done for God? Amen. Even for God giving you the life that you have, what have you actually done for God? I pray that God will be with us. Uh -huh. Go ahead. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. They will increase. After this, if people are not careful, once this expires, there will increase more ungodliness. Because it's not the first time that we have a pandemic. It's only this was more. So we have to stick in Christ. And I pray that God holds us full in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, let us sit down so I can just uh, get this um, real quick. Number two, we need to be faithful as God's ambassador. Faithful as God's ambassador. I want to ask a question. When was the last time that you speak to somebody about your faith? When was the last time you speak to somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ? When was the last time you preached to somebody, not in the church, not on the pulpit, that maybe you have a conversation with somebody and the conversation went into, you know, speaking to him about Christ? When was the last time that any of us have, has done that? We need to remember that the purpose for our living is to gather souls unto heaven, to gather siblings every world, every world to Father divine. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, he is in because of this elected for the joy the world cannot give us our Lord establishing to gather siblings every world, to gather siblings every world, every world to Father divine, not to gather siblings unto yourself. That's what the church is doing. We gather siblings unto ourselves. We want to know, I have the best numbers of worshippers. You don't have many worshippers. How many of your worshippers are actually saved? How many of them are actually going to go to heaven? That's what we need to think about. And one of the things that stop us from ministering to people is this. Cold feet and cold heart. Some of us can. But, you know, if I speak to God about this person, something might happen, this might do this, and then we're done. Some of us are afraid, and we forgot that fear is a God. I pray that God Almighty will be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So finally, we cannot run from God. Remember, you cannot run from God. If God has called you to be an evangelist, you're running around, you're going to be like Jonah. Something will bring you back. Something. I pray that thing will not be terrible in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because look at how the world is going on the news right now. The world itself, as it is, shut down everywhere. But how are you using your time at home? Are you using your time for God? Or is it normal time of the things that you do before? I pray that after this, the church that is unboxed, when it's put together, will become better in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray that at the end of our sojourn on earth, we are not just going to be viewers or, or signboards. Because some people are signboards. They wear sutana. When they say that they say they are celestial, but their they are acts, their actions, their thoughts, is not anything near Christian. I pray that God Almighty will touch us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us not forget what we've been discussing from the beginning of this year, especially before these few things begin to happen. We can understand that I said God allows. We can understand that God Almighty sometimes puts us in the den of lion to be able to glorify himself. Sometimes God will put us by the Red Sea just because he wants to glorify himself. All we have to do is to stay committed to God. Stay committed to God. Be innocent in the sight of God. Do no wrong to your accuser. And trust God always. I pray that God Almighty will minister and perfect our consensus in the name of Jesus. Amen. And for all those that have joined us online via the URL, I know you can't hear me. Just bear with us by next Sunday. I pray that God would help us to fix it in a very great way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless us all.